Thank you very, very much, Johannes, for the introduction and for Alfred inviting me. It's very nice to be back, let's say, on the other side, even though it's still the same side of the cameras. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, it's a pleasure to, to be speaking today. And um, today I want to talk about uh, joint work in progress. Let me say in progress with Takuzo Okada from uh, Saga University. Uh, and uh, I'm going to talk about flags on final triple, final triple leper surfaces. So this is a talk about um, case stability. And uh, so yeah, let me let me start with a bit of a, an introductory speech about this. And so I want, of course, let me know if I write too small because I have a tendency to do that. So um, I want to start with like a first, let's say motivating question that comes really from uh, differential geometry, which is when does a uh, final variety admit a Keller isometric? which well, I'm going to abbreviate for now as KE. Uh, so by this, I mean like um, a metric that is Ricci constant. That is uh, the Ricci of omega is equal to omega, well to, sorry, lambda omega, where omega is a Kähler form. Uh, so for instance, we have that for um, kx ample for x, like an algebraic variety. Um, and for kx trivial, we have that there is always uh, a Keller Einstein matrix. This uh, is these are results by Obin and Yao from the 70s, and also Yao by himself. This is for you know the the result is initially for smooth algebraic varieties, but then this has been uh, generalized further. Um, but yeah, so this is the the, the picture for uh, general type and club Yao varieties, but then. What I want to talk about today and, and what has been like a very active research topic recently is the case of final varieties. Where, well, let me just write it down, minus kx is on. And what happens is that for final varieties, well, there is um, obstructions Uh, to the existence of such matrix. And the obstructions have to do with, uh, have to do with uh, the automorphism group of X. Um, so let me let me just write down a theorem of Matsushima from 1957, where for X, uh, well, a smooth uh, final variety that admits a Kähler Einstein matrix, then if we have this situation, then the automorphism group of X is reductive. And this is very much the obstruction that we find. So as a like I said, the contronominal, like so we have that if uh, the automorphism of X is not reductive, then there is no way we can have a Kellenistrom matrix. Uh, and we do have, for instance, examples of final varieties that do not have Kellenistrom matrix, for instance, P2 blow up in one point. So um, so then you know, let's say question. What is the notion that captures the existence of Kähler matrix 
is what we call case stability. And yeah, so also another motivating question that is not uh, what I'm going to talk about today is uh, in the audience, most likely there are more experts than me on, on this, uh, is that case stability is the right, is the correct stability notion to make sense of moduli of fan varieties. And yeah, I'm not I'm not going to go into that, but just just to put it out there that uh, there is a completely uh, different direction and very important direction that uh, we can go to uh, with this with this study of case stability. So what I said here is just very differential geometric, but uh, this talk wants to be a talk in brush and geometry. So uh, I'm going to just briefly mention what uh, how do we connect this to birational geometry so first of all um, so let's say um, brief history let's say but very very brief uh, so um, the case stability is uh, has been originally defined well in several different ways but one of them is via uh, so let's say definition via test configurations. Um, so, well, here we can just mention two of the main contributors, Tian and Donaldson. And basically, test configurations, I'm not going to define them now. It's a bit long to do it and I'm not going to need them, but uh, these are basically special kinds of flat degenerations of your favorite fan variety X. And what we can associate to them is uh, a quantity called Futaki invariant. This is all a black, black box, but what I want to say is that case stability of X is defined uh, based on the positivity of this Futaki invariant over all test configurations. So all this uh, kind of flat degeneration, degenerations of X plus, uh, well, some conditions. Here, I, I'm being, of course, very sloppy if there is a whole word about this, but what I want to say with this is that um, the problem with this definition is that um, in order to prove case stability of a certain variety with this method, you have to check all possible test configurations, which is, you know, very impractical because there are, um, you know, there are situations in which there could be infinite test configurations. So uh, this is not really uh, operative, let's say. Uh, so yeah, this is very hard to check. All right, to check. Uh, on the other hand, you know, slowly, slowly, people, for instance, in this case, Liu and Shu, among others, have tried, kind of have managed to restrict the picture uh, from checking all com test configurations to so checking also special, actually only special test configurations. They are the ones where the central fiber is KLT. And here we already start seeing, aha, uh -huh, this sounds very much like MMP stuff. Um, so yeah, this is kind of the end of my history digression. And um, what I want to talk about now is uh, what, um, what has been uh, evaluated, what has been uh, used most recently and amongst Barashian geometers uh, to, to check case stability of final varieties, and is what has been called evaluative criterion. There you go. And here, let me just write some people, Fujita, Lee, Odaka, and others. Uh, yeah, so now I'm going to introduce the main character somehow of uh, 
of the study of case stability, and the first one is called alpha invariant. So we have X our funnel, and we define alpha of X to be the infimum over divisors linearly equivalent to minus Kx that are effective of so-called log canonical thresholds of X and D, where, oops, the log canonical threshold is the, defined to be the supremum of parameter C, small c, such that X C D is a log canonical pair, which basically means in, in words, what is the highest C so that uh, after that, the pair X C D stops being log canonical. And here, you know, with the infimum, we want to say amongst those Cs, which is the lowest that is achieved uh, in the same linear system of minus Kx. So now I can write down uh, like a theorem involving half invariance that is much more applicable than the ones that we have seen before. So we can say Tian Chita. That is, if X is a Q funnel, and if the alpha invariant is greater or well, greater or equal than, oops, dimension of X over dimension of X plus one, then X is case stable. Stable or well, semi-stable if the we have the the non-strict inequality. So this is uh, already seems much more useful because this alpha invariants are much more computable. Uh, however, uh, this bound is kind of high, so sometimes alpha invariants can be lower, and and so this inequality. Is not always useful to useful to conclude case stability. So, what I want to introduce now is uh, two other notions that are somewhat connected to alpha invariants. They are called beta invariants and delta invariants. So, to do that, I would start um, introducing two other quantities. So. Let's say that X is a funnel, dimension of X is N, and we take E a prime divisor over X, which is basically, uh, just to say that basically E is either in X or in some uh, rational model of x so something like there is like f from how did, how did i call it y to x and e might happen to be here and uh this is and y is a rational model of x so what we can define is the log discrepancy this one plus the standard discrepancy a a x e, which is well, in other words, one plus the order along e of k y minus f upper star of k x. Uh, okay, and this is uh, maybe let me do it like this, and this is log discrepancy. And then we can define another quantity, SXE, to be like so an integral normalized over the volume of minus Kx. 
and this integral is, uh, you know, it seems like an infinite integral, actually it's not um, of the volume of minus f upper star of kx minus t e, where e is this prime divisor. And here, the volume of d, like of whatever divisor d, is the limit for m that goes to infinity of h0 of m d over m to the power of n and factorial. Basically, these are the leading terms of global sections. Let's say slogan. And for instance, the, the volume uh, is for the nf is just the d to the power n, and also if this is big, this is infinite leaf, the volume of d is greater than zero. So what, what happens here is that for t getting bigger and bigger, this divisor here eventually is going to stop being big. So um, um, yeah, so basically uh, this is a finite integral. So let's say this is finite integral in um, in basically in the interval zero tau of e, where when we're pressing this, where tau of e is the pseudo effective threshold that is the SUP lambdas greater than zero, such that the, this volume here is greater than zero. So this is pseudo effective threshold. There you go. So then, you know, now that we have this, these two pieces, A and S, then we can define, uh, so, the beta invariant, that is just A, X, E minus S, X, C, and delta X, or E, that is the, uh, the quotient of A and S. Um, this is the delta invariant, this is what I called uh, also stability threshold. And yeah, so regard, and why are these two uh, quantities somewhat more useful in certain instances than the alpha invariants is that we have the following criterion that Jit and Lee and also Bloom and Shu, that x fano is k-stable or, well, semi-stable, if and only if, which is already very useful, for each prime divisor E over x, uh, the beta invariant is greater than zero or, well, greater or equal for semi-stability or equivalently. So these are two statements are combining them in, in the same kind of theorem environment. Uh, or the delta invariance is greater than one or greater or equal than one. So this is the kind of turning point here because this is the kind of, so uh, let's say, this one is the kind of inequality I I want to use in um, in in the project I want to uh, relate to you about. So yeah, uh, so this is was like a bit of context. 
what I, I want to talk about specifically is fun trifold upper surfaces. So first, so uh, let's say, um, let me just write this kind of second title. So now, super rigidity and case stability. So, yeah, so here I, I want to specifically look about, uh, look at uh, fun tree for upper surfaces. And let me first remind you what, what I mean by Barachian rigidity or super rigidity. So a Mori fiber space, X over S with this morphism phi is rationally rigid if up to isomorphism the um, the only Mori fiber space in the barational class of S, oh sorry, of X is well X itself. Uh, so basically, all the rational maps that are starting from uh, from this Mori fiber space actually lead back to it, and we say the Mori fiber space is rational, rationally super rigid. If, in addition, the uh, rational group of X is the same as the automorphism group. So in particular, in this case, you know, uh, the rational group is just the, the identity. So uh, we're kind of uh, in a good place when it comes to the obstruction that I mentioned earlier on in this talk. Um, so yeah, so these are the, the kind of objects we want to talk about and um, the the major result connecting rational super rigidity and case stability is the following there's a theorem by Stipitz and Zhuang from I think 18 where for x a q final trifle q final actually and so that the peak rank of X is one, which is also rationally super rigid. Then if the alpha invariant of X is greater than a half, then X is case stable. And yeah, so this theorem and the criterion I mentioned before are kind of the starting points somehow of this um, of this problem. So the Mori fiber spaces specifically I want to talk about are the following: the R so final threefold hypersurfaces. These are uh, weighted hypersurfaces inside weighted p force such that their final index is one, r q factorial, terminal, and quasi smooth. And well, these are like one of the, the famous reads 95 upper surfaces. And well, what do we know about these people? Well, we know that um, all quasi smooth members of this families are rationally rigid, and some are super rigid in particular. And well, these are results of quality. Click of and read, very classical, and also Chelsea Park. And 
also we have that uh, a general was a smooth member of this family is, is case stable. And this is the result by Chelsea. Uh, so what I uh, in this general idea assumption in the in the result by Chelsov, and who started this uh, this project actually? So so far I would say uh, we have that Kim Okada and Wan very recently have computed alpha invariants for super rigid. Uh, such final three fold upper surfaces. Without no generality assumption. So without generality assumption. Generality assumption. So uh, what they do is that then, so this is their theorem, is that any quasi smooth final threefold hypersurface with final index one that is super rigid has uh, alpha invariant greater or equal than a half, uh, and therefore is k stable thanks to wherever this one actually well uh yes yes um also there is the, this following uh relation between uh alpha invariance and delta invariance that delta invariance uh, at a certain point, I mean, now I'm going to I'm going to soon um, define what local delta invariant is, but. It's possible to find to to have this kind of relation and what they do is also to prove that. So in chemo and one, we have that in some cases they manage to prove that. Alpha invariant, the local alpha invariant at P is greater than three quarters, so the the desired um delta invariant greater than one kind of inequality is achieved uh but then um this is you know when well the alpha invariant is just greater than a half but you only have rigidity uh they cannot conclude case stability so so this is where like uh, my joint project with okada uh, steps in. So our goal is to prove prove case stability for strictly irrationally rigid fold hypersurfaces. without generality so like without uh, the generality assumption so basically in other words complete the work of chemo kada and one so um yeah so the result we're gonna just the upshot the result uh that um we work towards is the following so this is so, uh, is that any, this is of course a combination also of their previous work, just to put it all together, n equals is smooth, final threefold, hypersurfaces, upper surface, having, like of course of the 95 that, 
uh, that we saw before. Um, all right, that is strictly rationally rigid is case stable. Okay. So, uh, and how do we do this? Is by using delta invariants. So, um, as we saw before, like this criterion, where is it? Up here. Um, is based on well achieving this um, this inequality, satisfying this inequality for each prime divisor uh, over x. Um, what I want to say is that uh, here it actually is possible to do better, so to restrict the picture and not just look at the, uh, I mean not not look at every prime divisor, but uh, look at flags in um, uh, in our final three folds. So. First, I want to define what is a local delta invariant. So for um, a subvariety, so let's say Z in X is a subvariety. So and this local delta invariant is along Z. We define delta Z of X to be the infimum of AXE over SXE as before, where though we take prime divisors over X that contain Z in their cone. Yeah, so, and Z here is just an irreducible subvariety. So, the, the main technique we we use in this kind of computations is the uh, is based on a work of Aban and Zhang uh, that gives oh my god I didn't remember it very well uh, gives uh, estimates for local delta invariance. Uh, and the, the perk of this thing is that they do it just by looking at flags uh, that realize the inequality. And the inequality, let me call it star, which is this one here. And yeah, the, the kind of flags they talk about are called admissible flags. And these are uh, flags of sub, sub varieties that uh, where each sub variety is, uh, is, is irreducible. So these are like basically uh, things like this. Um, and so e each of these sub varieties are irreducible, and uh, co dimension of yi is i. And well, you know, they're in X or possibly in some rational model. And uh, so basically, the, the upshot how do we use this? Uh, basically, we bound uh, delta x from below. Uh, by computing local delta invariance along each piece of a chosen admissible flag. So, um, yeah, so the, the recipe to do this, so like the um, um, these bounds are based on uh, 
like some Zariski decomposition. They are in a way part of the hardest part on, in this project. So in, in our case, we are looking at three folds. So our flags are all of the form surface, curve, and point all inside X, of course. And well, this is irreducible curve. And uh, we define the following the following thresholds. So one is the pseudo effective threshold, is the max uh, over some parameter u, such that minus kx minus u y is pseudo effective. And based on this, then we compute a first Zariski decomposition for minus kx minus uy is um, positive part pu and a negative part for, of course, u that ranges between zero and tau. So this is first Zariski decomposition. So Z, D, let me call it like this, number one. Uh, and then further, we define, we have to decompose yet another time. Um, we define another threshold that is the maximum over another parameter V, such that PU restricted to Y minus V, Z is again pseudo effective. So, um, yeah, once we have this, this kind of threshold, then we can do the second Zariski decomposition. That is, uh, we want to decompose PUY minus VZ into two pieces, one called PUV and the other one called NUV. Um, yeah, so the, the estimate, that, that we have is the following. Let me just, ah, oh, okay. It was not that low as I thought. Um, we can take it up. Uh -huh. There we go. This is a bit troublesome to write down. Um, yeah, so I actually wrote it down for, for smooth funnels, but uh, I'm going to say in a minute uh, how we adapt this in uh, for uh, for the case in which we have singularities. So uh, I'm not going to go into all the details, but um, it will be a bit too long. But basically, given, uh, you know, like if we have a, f we, we take a point in X, we construct a flag uh, on it, and the, the local uh, stability threshold, so the delta invariant of X at P, is bounded from below from this, uh, I mean, by this three. Um, three quantities that are defined in this very specific way is based on multi-graded linear series. I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, but as you see, all of this, um, so this quantity is this Zariski decomposition that I mentioned before are the main ingredients to, to cook up this balance. And yeah, uh, the idea here is that um, to conclude case stability, we need to, um, for each kind of point in our um, final trifold, meaning smooth points and uh, the points in that are in the basket of singularities, uh, we want to realize this kind of, we want to find a suitable flag. It's We need just one that realizes this, um, um, the inequality of delta P being greater than, than one. And what we do it is like basically by proving that each of this lower bounds is greater than one. And uh, when we have, so if X is singular, well, our singularity is just, just terminal, um, we, we can take like a blow up, like for us, it's just going to be um, a Kalmata blow up of X at P and we can update the flag that we uh, we initially chose. Uh, so the flag y z p is going to be transformed into um, 
the problem transform of y in x twiddle, then z twiddle that is going to be the intersection between um, e, the exceptional divisor of phi, and y twiddle. And then we're going to look at small p. So this was a big p. This is a small p. And small p ranges in in z twiddle. So uh, so basically, you know, in the blow up, then we we carry over like the problem transforms of the all the risky decompositions. So we uh, in this uh, kind of bounce, we we need to you know add some twiddles here and there, but uh, the bounds are basically the same. And uh, yeah, so as I mentioned, we need to cook up all these risky decompositions here. So, uh, and this is where it becomes a very much variational geometric problem because we want to understand how the Mori cones, so in particular, NEF cones and effective cones are for uh, X twiddle. So, um, yeah, and the way we tackle this is by kind of uh, unearthing again the method to prove variational rigidity of uh, of fun trifold upper surfaces. So, variational rigidity was proven in several ways. So the idea is like excluding centers, maximal centers from your fun varieties. Maximal centers could also be uh, curves, but we don't care. We just look at points. So here we have either the procedure of untwisting, which is basically existence of uh, a circuit link initiated by phi, like the blow up of x at that point, or instead, uh, and, and this circuit of link basically uh, is an involution of X into itself, and it could be either a quadratic involution or an elliptic involution. Uh, otherwise, there is the, the other option that is called excluding. And this basically um, either involves either like a method called test class method or, uh, well, we blow up um we blow up the point p and then we see that the circuit of link initiated by phi actually breaks is a bad link so here we call them they call this kind of points non variational involution so yeah um so let me set the notation very briefly so X is XD inside uh, a weighted P4 that has uh, the following um, weights and H3X3, A4X4. So these are the weights, and this at the bottom are the the coordinates. And for simplicity, I'm actually going to just look at the quadratic involution case because the elliptic involution is just much more complicated. And so RP is of the form A over K for some AK amongst the A0 to A4 and has some local coordinates that have weight AI1, AI2, AI3 where, well, they're, they're just, uh, we have AI1 less or equal than AI2, less or equal than AI3. So in the in the QI case, quadratic involution, we distinguish three situations. One is the, the generic case. That basically, so here we have then, so for, 
uh, coordinates. So the one x, xai, xi2, xi3, xk, and then there is a remaining coordinate that is xj. So here we have some options. So if the uh, equation of our variety, so this is f equals zero, is given by xk squared xj plus xkf plus g, where this f and g are in xj and the local coordinates at p. If xj divides f, we have that actually there is no link. So we're kind of in a, in a situation in which the, the, the link breaks. And so we have the following Morricone. So here, well, minus kx linearly put into a for some a in the class group. So, okay, this is, oops, aj, microsoft a minus d over ak e, where um, our effective cone, oops, is this one, effective cone x tiddle, twiddle, and then the movable cone is this one. Instead, we can have what we call a non-degenerate non case, where xj does not divide f, so we, we do have a link, and this is the uh, kind of trickier part, because here instead we have kind of more rays, and, well, let me just not write them all, because I'm kind of running out of time, but here the important thing is that the effective cone has one more ray, and especially the movable cone has two chambers. Because here, what happens is that we have blown up x, and we in, before the, the link was breaking, but here we have the involution that uh, that still links to x. So uh, here we have that the movable cone is divided in two nef cones, one for x to do and one for x to do prime. Uh, and then, you know, we have a further case, for instance, there is the, the generate case, uh, sorry, the exceptional case, which has another condition on the equations and has no link. Uh, yeah, so the tricky part here is understanding these cones and computing the Zariski decomposition, especially the second one, because the second one if we look at it actually, where it is here, we see that this is actually a Zariski decomposition on, well, white twiddle once we uh, we blow up. Um, so white twiddle is, um, is a surface that um, has potentially higher picker rank than X twiddle itself. And uh, the Morricone of X twiddle not necessarily restricts to um, to white to the one of white twiddle, so so that is like the um, the the tricky bit. So um, for uh, for instance, if we just restrict it uh, at QI, so I, I just want to make a, a comment about what kind of choice of flag do we use. So for P in X at QI, well, we consider the flag where Y is XI3 equals zero restricted to X, and this is like uh, AI3A, and we take Z to be Y intersected with um, um, like the hyperplane where we set the coordinate x i1 to vanish. And therefore, we can compute what the thresholds are. Like, for instance, tau is ai1 over ai3. And the 
this risky decomposition of minus kx minus uy for u in, in this range is pu equal 1 minus uh, ai3 u times a and n u is equal to 0, for instance. Uh, and for the second risky decomposition, well, I think I will just uh, try to write this down and then I'm going to conclude. So let's say proposition again. Um, so if P is smooth, uh, we have that the second threshold is something like 1 minus m mu over a i 1. Uh, for m, the highest weight in uh, P4. And there's a risky decomposition of uh, P u over y minus V z is, well, of course, for V in 0 T u is P u V equal 1 minus M u minus A i 1 V A over y and N u V equal 0. That's one. But for instance, when P in X is a QI, what we have is that we have to take the blow up. And for instance, in the, uh, let me just look at the non-degenerate case. There is the case in which we, we have a link, just because it's, it, it's a bit uh, more complicated because we have more chambers. Then, uh, what we want to look at is, um, so we need to find, so uh, T with OU is going to be the, correspond to the edge, the second edge of the effective cone. So, uh, so here basically our chamber is the following. Oops, uh, we have E, hyperserve of E, and then we have one, two, three other rays where um, let's say this one is the, um, oops, it's too big, is the nef cone. So this is the nef cone of X twiddle. Uh, and instead, this part and this part are, um, yeah, so this part here is the nef cone of x to prime, and then we go all the way to the to the very end where we have the edge of the effective cone. So here we want to look at the range where v is in between uh, zero and one over a k of one minus a i three u, um, which is this part here. I mean, and now I didn't write down who exactly is each of these rays, but yeah, I'm just going to talk about the picture. So we want to um, decompose this guy here. And here we, we have that PUV twiddle because now we're on the blow up. And yeah, basically we discovered this is just on F. Instead, if we look at, so, okay, this was, let's say this part, but instead, if we want to look at this other section of, of the cone, so basically we want uh, one over a K, one minus a I three U, Lesser equal than than v. Lesser equal than what well, what actually is p u twiddle, which is um, in this case is well. Let me just write it down. Uh, 
then we want basically our divisors here are going to be uh, linear combinations of these two arrays. So uh, our PUV are going to be lambda times f upset of a restricted to y two do minus one of a k z two do and n u v equal mu of well pep star of a restricted to y twiddle minus d minus a k a j a k z twiddle well this is this guy here is this last ray uh, where lambda and mu solve the linear system of equations I'm about to write down so lambda plus mu needs to be one minus a i three u and one over a k lambda plus this coefficient here. Yeah, so uh, yeah, with this basically what I'm trying to say is that uh, once we compute all this risky decomposition that could be explicitly written, then um, it's possible to compute the bounds and to in turn uh, conclude that all of this um, um all of these bottom quantities these s's are less than one and that in turn for each p in our uh, strictly rigid fun triple upper surfaces uh for each p we can find a flag that realizes uh that each of these pieces of the bound is greater than one so uh in this way by computing this bounds for delta invariance we uh, we proved that uh, all the remaining uh, final triple that were surfaces that were left out by the study of chemo Kada and one are actually case stable, and this is for all of all of the members in those families. And yeah, I think I slightly run over time. Sorry for that, and I'm going to stop here. Thank you. <laughs>